innocent. Cephas. What you're saying? He's innocent? Them innocent. Cephas. The whole of them innocent. Wait, them wait, innocent. Wait, wait. But listen, home. what's going yeah. on? The name to them in court, them just want to sink them. But, but what, what, what for you? No man can take that way. God love them. So the blessing I read there. So the blessing I read there. What for you? No man can take it. It is our experience that when you have cases where sometimes the accused are well-known people within their particular community and the witnesses may reside in the same community and you factor into that the fact that the witness may have indicated though it was offered that they do not wish to go on the witness protection program because this is a voluntary situation then the prosecuting authorities and the police especially who are on the ground or in the trenches have to make the best of the situation. Very often the prosecution has to play the hand that it has been dealt. So in this particular case, when I looked at the file, discussed the matter with the deputy, looked at the detailed opinion, we have one choice or the other, one option or the other. Whether to put up and offer no evidence because we don't have the witness, or to enter an, a conditional nolly to give the police more time to try to find the witness. Now, my understanding was that this witness had made himself available up to very late last year. Now, I have said often to the police, when you have matters of this type. It is critical to make sure that there is high quality witness care. It is unfortunate that in this case the prosecutors were not made aware that that which we had endorsed our file with late last year in plea and case management hearing that the witness was available and they were in touch with the witness that in the interim when the matter was set for trial um, earlier this month, or was it last month, we were not communicating with and told that they were having difficulty finding the witness. Factored also into that is that the particular area where the witness was located, which is the same area that the accused are located, from time to time, may have disturbances, for want of a better word, or let me call it disturbances which may make the environment unstable. We have had the experience where when that happens in other cases, witnesses relocate for their own security. So if it is that the police on the ground were not in touch with the witness, and sometimes even when they are in touch with the witness, the witness will relocate without leaving a forwarding address or without contacting the police authorities. And it has happened where we have made diligent, diligent efforts. Once we have been given sufficient notification, we work with the police. And sometimes we have been able to get the witness. Sometimes we have had to get the witness and put the witness in protective custody and bring the witness to court. It just depends on the particular circumstances. So it was just unfortunate that the witness, let us put it this way, could not default. So I had to make a judgment call. And this is the judgment that I made after considering all the factors because the public interest is very important in that it cannot be that anybody out there, there must feel that when the matter is coming for trial, all you have to do is intimidate the witness and then the witness disappears. That is not in the public interest because once a crime has been committed, the police have reasonable cause to suspect that they have gathered evidence. Then the public interest and their belief in the credibility of the administration of justice will be enhanced by the fact that they see matters coming before the court and 
they are properly ventilated and somebody is found guilty or innocent. We got up our knee, our prayer for the whole seven of them will never leave us. None of them. And the whole way come for us. Can you say what was behind the judge's reason for accepting your nolly prosecutor this morning? In this matter? Yes. The law. The law. It was the law. Because under section 94 and section of the constitution, it is only the DPP who has the power to institute, take over, or discontinue. What happens? What the knowledge does, it doesn't free the accused in terms of an acquittal. What it does, it causes a pause in the proceedings, conditional on the availability of the There's no time limit. There's no time limit. There's no time limit. So I believe that the learned judge reconsidered the area in terms of the law on the area and recognized that once the DPP enters a knowledge, that discontinues the matter. And remember that subsection 6 of the Constitution indicates that no authority, no person or authority can fetter the DPP's discretion. But as I have indicated to you before, whenever the DPP makes a decision, it is always open to the accused or the defense or any attorney acting on behalf of the client where the client has been affected by the DPP's decision to take the decision on judicial review. So much so that we have a little, we have several units at the office, cyber crimes, we have anti gang and we also have a, a little judicial review unit as well, which is headed by a deputy, because we have become accustomed on occasion to appear. Uh, not necessarily to just go to the Attorney General's chambers as we used to do and as we can do to ask them to represent us in judicial review. We now make our own appearance and represent ourselves and we have done pretty well there too, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so, you know, the beauty about the law and the practice is that all stakeholders have access to the law. And the beauty of it is that the rule of law, as I like to say, is alive and well in Jamaica. And let me put it this way. I think what happened today is a triumph for the fact that the rule of law is alive and well.